It's an LED lamp and it's our very favourite type. It's a dead one. And this one has a very interesting fault. Let me plug it into this tester, turn the power on, and it is showing two watts. And yet, do you see any light? Hold on, I'll turn the light off. I'll take the exposure off and turn the light off. And you can see it's barely flickering and, oh, oh it's suddenly lit, actually. And now it's gone up to four watts. That's even better because before it was just getting red hot and not doing anything and it's just kind of fixed itself. 4.6, that's interesting. Okay, I think we need to explore this. One moment, please. The, oh, no, no, there it goes. The light is about to come back. So let's explore. I shall zoom down this. So uh, full disclosure here. I I may have nobbled this because occasionally I'll see dead lamps and I'll say, I kind of want to find out why that lamp is dead, so I nicked out a pub. I cannot name which pub I nicked it out of. It's okay, it was a good thing, it was drawing lots of power and getting very hot, and it wasn't doing much in the way of producing light. But now we're going to find out why it wasn't producing light. So I'm going to carefully peel this open with a pair of side cutters. And so many things, I mean... The fact it just suddenly lit up there is new because it hadn't done that before. All it had been doing was just gently flickering the background. So that makes me think that the fault has evolved. There is a capacitor in there. That's interesting. I almost wasn't expecting that because they leave so little space in these uh, bases. The SBC, small, oh, SEC, should I say, small Edison screw, that it doesn't leave a lot of room for actual electronics. So let's uh, keep peeling this like a tin of sardines until we can get in. You could just fast forward over this bit if you want to. Some people like it, some people don't. Sometimes it takes longer than others, and this is one of those times it's taking a bit longer than others. There is a silicone sleeve here. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to guess this might possibly be a linear current regulator, but I'm not really sure. I was contemplating all the things that could go wrong. Oh, that's quite promising. That's quite promising. Oh, the actual circuitry is bedded right into that. Let's see if we can get this uh, cover off completely there. The cover is off completely. Well, the, the brass bit, anyway. Oh, I can see uh, sooty, smoky bits here. Is that possibly been burning? Or is that just the lamp cement? Oh, the lamp cement isn't usually that dark, is it? Has it been arcing? Possibly. There's a little wire going on to the side here. That's quite a neat construction. The little silicon cap like that. Ooh. Oh, it's all potted in with goo. Is it supposed to be potted in with goo? It's actually just a little bit crusty. I'm not sure it is supposed to be potted in with goo. Although that does feel just like standard sort of lamp cement. It's also not really. It's kind of like well packed up. I should also keep in mind that this capacitor could actually hold a charge owing to the fact that uh, the light isn't working properly. What is all this white stuff? Is that more silicon or goo? What on earth has been going on here? Is this part of the manufacturing or is this just a, a huge mess? Right, tell you what, I think we're going to have to pause here to dig this all out and I'll be back in a moment. One moment please. And resume. And this thing is absolutely baked. It doesn't just have lots of lamp cement on it, but it's also baked lamp cement. And the components have been baked too. So when I've been able to uncover some of the components and I've tried to clean them to read the numbers, I failed. But there was also a soft white putty-ish, maybe heat transfer silicon or something in here. However, I managed to read the numbers on one of the chips. Oh, incidentally... The lamp is currently running on a little roughed up LED capacitive drop power supply, approximately 1.9 watts. It's worth mentioning that every so often it flickers. So I think part of the problem may have been a failed LED because all these filaments, all four of them, do appear to be in series in here. So one failed LED will effectively kill the whole lamp. That's a shame when things like that happen right too. Well, let's put this up out the way. So... I managed to uncover this chip. 
It says 85209 It took a bit of detective work. Took a long time to actually work this out. I've just sweep all this crusty, crumbly, burnt stuff out off to the side. But based on the number of components, I was able to find out that it is a VAS 1106A. Let me just bring this in. VAS 1106A. May have to tame this down a wee bit. Let's tame it down a bit. Oh, that's way too much, but not to worry. A little bit of ripple on the lamp there, but not to worry. Um, and of the data sheet, actually, you know what? Just give us a second. I'm going to bring this up to a decent, proper intensity. One moment. That's better. I'll leave this lamp shimmering here so you can uh, spot it uh, if it decides to flicker. So there were multiple options for the VAS 1106A chip. It it's basically a dimmer-friendly uh, chip which uh, allows you to put an extra load resistor in and it will switch that load resistor in to actually keep a triac dimmer latched on. Um, but interestingly, there was also a transistor type component and this is also in this particular schematic and it is a VAS1101, not much... Uh, 1001. Not much information on it. I found a Chinese data sheet and it's basically... It's an auxiliary, auxiliary linear current regulator that you can uh, basically put it in series of your LEDs and it helps soften the ripple, uh, which could be caused by phase angle control from the uh, from a dimmer. So it's just basically uh, just helping smooth the LED by regulating the current to a, a better degree and uh, stopping it sort of choppy on and off. Not that that should be too bad with this capacitor, but it can still potentially happen. Um other things. Uh, yeah, all of these components were more or less, component for component, by account, including that diode, they were there, but they didn't necessarily survive being exposed. But this is the one that matches. With the one addition, it's got what I guess to be a 10 ohm resistor, which was also pretty baked and crumbly. Everything's baked and crumbly. This isn't a surprise. The capacitor has seemingly survived to a degree. It's not puffed up, although it may have dried out, because that's what happens when you put a uh, big, Mounts of electronics and tiny little caps. But this is a valiant effort. It's a company called Bell makes these lamps. And uh, it's a valiant effort that they've managed to fit all this in and make effectively a dimmable lamp that can actually be legitimately dimmed without too much flicker. That's not bad. The flicker at the moment is just because the crap circuitry I've got with it. Uh, but that is it. The current set one and current set two. I'm guessing one is for setting the... Uh, the load resistor and one of them, oh, that's probably the load resistor there. And the other one is for setting the uh, current that charges up this capacitor. Uh, but that's it. It's an interesting lamp. It was actually well worth salvaging from its uh, its grave of being flickering gent in the background and dissipating a lot of heat. The fact it's dissipating a lot of heat makes me think that that was that resistor. And if that's the case, then that was dissipating the best part of two watts in the circuitry. I wonder where most of that power was going, because it certainly came up in the meter as two watts. Um, but uh, who knows um, where it was being dissipated? Certainly, some of it will have been dissipated by R three here, which appears to be the sort of the uh, the auxiliary load for latching on tracks. But that is it. An interesting lamp, well worth taking apart. It does occasionally flicker. It's just behaved itself inexplicably during the making of the second part of the video. But this is the type of circuit, and it's also uncovered that chip that we've found in other circuits, but not really known what it was. Now we do. It's an auxiliary current regulator. Quite a neat little chip.